Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. Today I have a Thanksgiving or holiday appetizer and dessert to share with you. I'll be showing you how I make a charcuterie board as well as a sweet potato pie. All right, let's get into these two recipes. First up, I'm making a charcuterie board. Now we have this pretty often, I really love snacky type dinners and meals, and that's something that I love about these charcuterie boards. You can just snack on them. I also love that you can use different meats and cheeses and vegetables, and you can you know use whatever you have on hand. It's a great way to just use up little odds and ends. So this is how I'm making it today, but again, customize this to whatever you and your guests or your family like or whatever you have on hand. You'll of course need a board for your charcuterie board. You can buy a fancy board. I just use my large wooden cutting board. You could also use a platter. If you don't have any of those, just take a piece of cardboard and cover it with aluminum foil. It will work just fine. First, I'm taking this brie and topping. I got this a couple weeks ago at Sam's Club. I'm going to remove the brie cheese and lay it on my board and then follow the instructions which say to microwave the cranberry topping and then pour it over the brie cheese. So I'm going to do that. Now, the next few items, I got them all at Aldi. This is the antipasti. It's marinated with olives, uh, mushrooms, bell peppers, and cheese. I don't like olives, but my husband loves this. He says it's delicious. Next, I'm using this honey goat cheese. Then I'm going to slice up some of this mild Irish cheddar cheese. And that honey goat cheese, I know I've mentioned that before, but it's delicious. Next, I'm taking this package of uh, charcuterie meats that I got. It has three different kinds in it, and there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this. I just lay things out on the board, and as you'll see me do, I move things around. Honestly, just lay them out. Don't worry about being perfect. Really, no matter what you do, it will look amazing. Next, I'm going to take this little bowl. I got these little bowls at the Dollar Tree. There were four for a dollar, and I love these for dips and also for charcuterie boards. I have this fig jam that I got, I believe, at Marshall's or TJ Maxx. So I'm going to add a little bit of that. And there I'm pouring that cranberry sauce over the brie. Next, I have some grapes and strawberries on hand in my fridge, so I'm adding some of those. I have these sweet gherkin pickles. I got these at the Dollar Tree. I had them in my pantry. My husband loves these, so I added a little dish and then added that. Here in this little ramekin, I'm going to add in some honey. And again, with all these condiments and everything, just use whatever you have or whatever you like. In this little bowl, as you can see, I have some mixed nuts. I got these at the Dollar General. They've been in my pantry, so I'm going to use that up. And then this cracker assortment, I also got this at Aldi, so I'm just adding some crackers. And then when I do charcuterie boards, I always like to add in a little something sweet if I can. I got this assortment. These are Belgian chocolates. And as you can see, they look um, like little pumpkins and corn, very fall-like. So I'm going to place these on the charcuterie board. I believe I got these at Trader Joe's. That's all I was planning on using, but I noticed I had a couple little holes. So I dug around in my refrigerator to see what I could come up with to fill those in. So I'm using some baby carrots and then some sliced pepperoni. This is just from Walmart. Here's the finished board. This was delicious. So, so good. And I am not at all creative. The first time I did this, I was kind of intimidated because I was like, I don't know that I can make it look good. But like I said earlier, don't worry about that. Just lay it all out, you know, however you think it looks nice. And trust me, it will look good. And more importantly, it will be delicious. I think you and your family and guests will love something like this. Now, to be honest, for Thanksgiving, we never really make appetizers because we always have our Thanksgiving dinner at lunchtime at noon. And so, you know, for that, we just don't have appetizers. But I think this would be great to make for Thanksgiving if you're like us and eat your main meal around lunchtime. Because I don't know about you, but, you know, by the time Thanksgiving Day evening <laughs> rolls around, I am not about to cook another meal. I've been cooking for a couple days and cooking all day long on Thanksgiving, so I'm not about to cook something else. So we normally just have leftovers, but I think this would be great to make. It's not super filling. It's super easy. You're really not cooking anything. You're just setting different things out, and your guests can just kind of graze um, you know, that evening. But if you do serve Thanksgiving dinner on, you know, dinner time, I still think this would be a great appetizer to make because again, it's not super filling and it doesn't really require cooking. You can just put it together, set it out and allow your guests to graze. Now for the Thanksgiving dessert. I know everyone tends to turn toward like pumpkin desserts, pumpkin pie, and trust me, there's nothing at all wrong with that. I love pumpkin pie. It's delicious. But here in the South, 
we love sweet potato pie. Well, let me say, I say we love that, but there's like this great debate. A lot of people either love sweet potato pie and prefer that over pumpkin, or they love pumpkin pie and prefer it over sweet potato pie. For me, I think they're both delicious. But again, you know, I can kind of see that divide even in my own family. You know, there's some of us that love pumpkin pie, but like my dad and my grandpa prefer sweet potato pie. So, let me show you how I make this sweet potato pie. I tried a new recipe this year. I couldn't find the recipe that I used the past couple years, but this was good and it was super easy. So let me show you how I made this. Here are the ingredients that I'll be using. So first you'll need a pie crust and I will talk about the pie crust more in just a second. But for that, I'm going to use some shortening and all purpose flour. For the pie, you'll need some cinnamon, sugar, ginger, evaporated milk, You'll need mashed sweet potatoes. Now you can take a couple sweet potatoes, you know, wash them, peel them, and cut them up, boil them, bake them. I'm using a can of yams. I'll just drain those really well. You'll need salt, vanilla extract, some melted butter, and eggs. For the pie crust, you can absolutely use a store-bought one, and that's what I intended to do this day. I could have swore I had one in my freezer, but when I went to make this pie, I couldn't find it, and I didn't want to run to the store just for a pie crust. So I decided to make one from scratch. I've used this recipe from Crouton Cracker Jacks a couple times, and every time I've made it, it's turned out perfect. It's been delicious, and it's so easy. I used to be intimidated, but for whatever reason, his recipe and the way he showed how to make it just made it so easy to me. So if you've ever made biscuits or anything like that, you can absolutely make this. It's basically the same thing. It's just instead of using milk, you're gonna use some water. So in this bowl, I'm adding in the flour. I'm going to add in the salt, mix that together. I'm then going to take my shortening and cut it into the flour with a fork. You just wanna keep doing that. And by cutting in, I just mean take your fork and kind of press the shortening into the flour and against the side of the bowl until you have fine crumbs. Next, you're going to take some cool water. You don't necessarily have to have cold water. Like sometimes uh, if you see people making, well, not sometimes, but if you see people making a pie crust with butter, they'll tell you to use like ice water to keep the butter cold. But with the shortening, you don't really have to worry about that so much. So you just want it to be cool water. And then you're going to add the water to that mixture by the tablespoon. Now, this kind of just depends on your flour, on the humidity level that day. I believe it took me five tablespoons of water, but just again, add it tablespoon tablespoon by tablespoon until there's no dry flour remaining and it forms a ball. I'm sprinkling some flour on my clean kitchen counter and then I'm going to take the dough ball and place it on the flour. Then I like to sprinkle my hands, the top of the dough ball and the rolling pin with some flour. And then I'm just going to roll the pie crust out. And you wanna do this until it's about an inch bigger than your pie plate. Then I'm carefully going to roll the pie crust onto the rolling pin and then place the pie crust into my pie plate. If your uh, dough tears, no worries, just pinch it back together. And as you can see, I'm kind of going around and lifting that pie crust up just so that it falls down into the pie plate. I'm going to cut off the excess dough. You can take this and brush it with a little butter and some cinnamon sugar and bake it along with the pie. It makes a delicious little snack. But of course, you won't bake it nearly as long as you bake the pie. Then I'm going to just take my fingers and crimp the edges of the pie. I am not a professional baker. I've only made a homemade pie a handful of times, so don't judge me on my crimping skills. But, you know, like I always say, there there's no sweet potato pie police. Nobody's going to come into your kitchen and yell at you if your pie crust isn't perfect. And if they do, then, you know, just kick them out of your house. You don't need that kind of people in your life. <laughs> but anyway, I'm just going to set this pie crust to the side and then get started on the pie filling. For the filling, you can use a stand mixer. You can also use an electric mixer. I'm using my God-given mixer today, which are my hands. So in this bowl, I'm adding in my sweet potatoes. Like I mentioned before, you can cook up sweet potatoes. And I used to do that until I read in the comments of one of the recipes that I tried that people said that they just used these canned yams. And so I figured, hey, make it easier on myself. So that's what I use now. So I just drain it really well. I've added it to this bowl and I'm going to mash them up. Next, I'm adding in my granulated sugar, and I forgot to mention this, but I'll have the link to Crouton Cracker Jack's pie crust recipe, as well as the recipe that I used for this pie filling. I'll have those linked in the description box below. I'm adding in my melted butter, and I'm going to mix that up. Then I'm adding in my eggs, and I'll mix those in as well. Then the vanilla extract. Next, the salt, cinnamon, and ground ginger. 
Finally, I'm going to add in the evaporated milk, stir that until it's combined really well, and then it's ready to go into the pie crust. Now, I forgot to mention this earlier, but the pie plate that I'm using is not a deep dish. It's just a standard nine inch pie plate. I like to put it on a cookie sheet just in case the pie happens to, you know, cook over. I don't have a mess in the oven to clean up, but I'm adding that filling to the pie crust. I'm going to put this into a preheated oven set to 350 degrees, and you'll bake this for 45 minutes to an hour or until a knife inserted into the center comes out clean. Mine took just that about an hour. Here's the finished pie out of the oven. I'm going to allow it to sit and cool completely. You want to allow it to set for at least a couple hours. And here's the finished pie. Here is a serving of this pie. We like to serve it up with some whipped cream. We prefer homemade, but of course the aerosol ready whip in a can, there's nothing wrong with that. Today I had some of the whipped cream in a can from Aldi. It was the maple and vanilla flavored. It was delicious. This pie is so yummy and it is so easy to put together. I highly recommend you all give a sweet potato pie a try, especially if you've never had it. <laughs> that rhymed. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you like this video. If you're looking for some Thanksgiving side dishes, I'll have a couple of videos linked in the description box below where I share some of our favorite side dish recipes. So you can check that out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.